USA Ultimate presents the 2015 U.S. Open Championships. We're at Lakota West High School in Westchester, a few miles north of Cincinnati. What a great place to spend the 4th of July. It's the U.S. Open Championships and the semifinal round for the women as the Boston Brute Squad gets set to take on the San Francisco Fury. You look at the semifinal brackets, traffic and riot hooking up in the other semi with the two winners converging tomorrow in the championship. And with that, welcome Sean Kenny alongside the voice of Ultimate, Evan Lepler. And Evan, we look at this game. We have Callahan Award winners on both sides, talent written on both these units. It's really incredible how the talent has congregated with these two teams. Seattle Riot, probably the third uber talented team in the women's division. But Boston and San Francisco, both in similar spots. They're integrating some new pieces, also integrating new coaches from last year. Brute Squad has had no trouble making the adjustment to a new coach, at least this weekend they haven't. 5-0 and oh as they dominated their pool. Yeah, one a Universe Point game against Scandal, really exciting. On Universe Point, their two Callahan Award winners were on the sideline. That's how deep they are. Leela Tanell, a third Callahan Award winner, not with Boston this weekend, but they do have Leanne Hoffman, and while she didn't win the Callahan, she was a great player at Northwestern, and she has gotten even better the last couple of years. Small in stature, but her impact is gigantic. She's a type of player that can do everything, very similar to Anna Nazaroff, who we'll talk about in a second. Yeah, there's Callahan's all over the board. That just kind of tells you the talent level. Anna Nazarov powering San Francisco Fury, and this has been the trademark of success through the years. Nine straight chips to the national championship game. They lost in the finals each of the last two years after winning seven in a row. But the big difference this year is Maddie Singh is no longer the head coach, but they've got two very experienced coaches. Kevin Cisna, who's here, Samantha Salvia, who's not. And the talent on this team just continues to be remarkable. Anna Nazaroff is one of a dozen players you could talk about. She is the engine to their defensive line, plays the game with passion and heart, and she plays her best in big games. She had the gold medal winning throw in Dubai, winning gold for the Beach Worlds women's team this past March. It's been amazing to watch her grow as a player, and even at age 30, she's still one of the best. Root squad was here at this moment last year. They made it all the way to the finals. Can they take it one step further and get past the power of the women's sport in ultimate? The fury of San Francisco. The ticket to the finals gets punched next. The 2015 U.S. Open Ultimate Championships are presented by Discraft Ultra Star. The official disc of USA Ultimate. Ask your retailer for Discraft Ultra Star. The Women's Sports Foundation, ensuring equality and leadership opportunities for girls and women through sports. And the Girls' Ultimate Movement, a strategic initiative designed to increase girls' participation in the sports of Ultimate. And welcome back to Westchester. Moments away from the opening poll. Let's meet today's starting lineup, starting with Boston. Leanne Hoffman, the cutter, along with uh, some talented cutters up front. Malinowski, Bitterman, who leads this team with 12 goals. And then you see the handlers, the former Callahan winner with Paula Seville. Ari Jackson doing quite the job in his first year at the helm with Brute Squad. On the opposite sideline for the Fury, Kimba Jorgensen, Sarah Carnahan making the transition from mixed to women's this year. Uh, highlighting some of the cutters, Alex Snyder, Sabrina Fong, and then, as uh, Evan mentioned earlier, Nazarov, the tremendous handler, first-year head coach Kevin Cisna, first year guiding this program as the head coach, a veteran who has been around the sport many years. It is an absolutely gorgeous Independence Day here in Westchester, Ohio. Clear blue skies, a few high clouds, but uh, ideal weather conditions, and we certainly hope uh, you're enjoying your 4th of July. Here's what you need to know if you're new to the sport of ultimate. Seven players to a side. We played a 15. Halftime is reached once the first squad hits eight goals. The disc may advance in any direction. You cannot run with the disc. Must keep that pivot planted. Player must pass the disc within 10 seconds. Otherwise, you're hit with a stall. Games are self-officiated, meaning uh, the spirit of the sport is what stands up, sets it apart from the rest. And then the team switch ins after each score. Offense completing a pass in the end zone is what uh, signifies the score in the sport of ultimates. We are ready to go. It will be Fury with the opening poll. Cree Howard lets her go, and we are underway. It's a semifinal of the U.S. Open here in Westchester, Ohio. Root squad 
handling for the first time. John, we've got perfect conditions to just sit back, relax, and watch these two teams battle. I mean, very little wind out there. A stark contrast to last year's U.S. Open semifinals and finals and gale force wins in Minnesota. Much more pleasant to throw around some plastic here north of Cincy. Shirley Cohen on the far side for Brute Squad. And before we go any further, we want to thank Boston for their uniform selection. As play-by-players, we appreciate the fluorescent look. And the game's first turnover as they went looking toward the end zone for Kisau, knocked away. Good play there by Nazarov. She's just relentless. Great anticipation. Just remarkable field sense. She started playing ultimate as a freshman at UCLA. Was very intimidated at first. Then became a Callahan Award winner as a senior. A deep huck downfield with a step. It's LaRoche, and she'll make the catch. Good grab, and here comes Fury on the attack. Good position as they pass it far side, but what a layout, and the D for Brute. And there is an injury as Leon Hoffman giving up the body, knocking the pass away. I mentioned earlier that Hoffman is similar to Nazaroff and very almost identical plays, but a, a scary landing there for Hoffman. Looks like she took a on, knee, kind of took that knee in the midsection. You can see the pain on her face. So here is one of the true stars of this sport, Leon Hoffman, Northwestern product out of Golden, Colorado. Very humble when you talk to her, but just asserts a dominance when she's on the field with her lightning quickness. See that right knee that time of uh, Marika Austin. A good sign that she's walking off under her own power. Hopefully she's all right to return to this game. Each team with a turnover back to Brute Squad. Great man-to-man -man look, the man, pull. horizontal pull. step here for Brute. Open up space in front of the desk. Observers getting everybody situated. We mentioned Brute had a strong U.S. Open last year to kick off the tour. They made it all the way to the finals, losing to Riot 10-7. Oh, here's a takeaway. Good read that time. And Fury gets control of it. Nice job there by Carolyn Finney. Yeah, she's just gotten better and better. Now she's a captain, a true leader of the team. And Tremendous handler defense. That's not easy to do. And he never played ultimate prior to her freshman year in college, and that's a similar course for a lot of these outstanding athletes able to pick up the sport and continue to grow with it. Looks like we have a call downfield. So they will stop action. It's a really good matchup. The two number 13s, Cree Howard and Becky Malinowski, as Finney. Little miscommunication there. Thought Nazarov was going to go dump. Instead, she went the strike up line cut. Brute Squad takes over. Maybe some early nerves in this situation, Evan. Just trying to. First point of the day. Warren Bitterman gets it to the center of the field. Lori Zipperstein has it. Floats it far side. Lunging up is Malinowski. Dump it right back to Malinowski. She comes backhand with it. Over to Zipperstein. With the disc, Paula Seville, the 2012 Callahan Award winner with Michigan. High floating disc, jumping up and snatching it as Malinowski to keep possession. Look at that grab there by Groom, and they'll cap it off with a score. Patient approach. And Root Squad fires the opening salvo. That was just a fun opening point. Layouts left and right. Belly Ma Becky Malinowski skies over Cree Howard. And then up line, dodging the D of Marika Austin into the end zone. Four turnovers, three blocks on this first point. Mentioned the U.S. women's team taking gold in Dubai. Malinowski, who picked up that assist, was a member of that gold medal winning squad as well, as was Cree Howard, who was marking her. Yeah, she led the women's division in goals at that tournament with 22 at a big performance. And again, they just have so many different weapons. You look at Seville, and we mentioned the Callahan Award winners. She won it at Michigan in 2012. 
This is her second year with Brood Squad. Yeah, last year, Brood Squad really took a big step forward, gained a ton of talent. Leanne Hoffman from uh, Chicago Machine, the Chicago area, gained Malinowski, and you know, they really you know, took a, a large step forward last year and all the way to the semis at Nationals, but certainly didn't end the season the way they wanted to. And a lot of teams need to walk before they can run, obviously, sure. and, and this is the year that I think they're targeting. Seen Fury with the disc a lot here in the opening going. One nothing, Brute Squad with the lead. First touch for Sarah Carnahan. Carnahan with a shot downfield, wide open. Sabrina Fong near the goal line. Fong will wait for help to arrive. Set up, they go back on the dump, controlling it. Is Snyder. Good layout on the grab as they swing it over to Jorgensen. Now toward the front of the end zone and in for the Fury score. So that did not take long. Eric Clancy, seventh year player for Fury, able to tie it up at one apiece. Now, a byproduct of the fact that there's just so much talent on San Francisco, we don't talk enough about Alex Snyder anymore. I mean, for a long time, she was considered the greatest player in the world, and she's still in the conversation with her throwing ability and her leadership. She's the pivot on this big, quick swing that opened up the scoring toss for Jurgensen. Nice little backhand flip on the assist for Kayla Jorgensen, 1-1. One, one. Look at these two teams and the Fury and their route to this semifinal. They finished four and one in Group B, Pool B. Their one loss was to Riot, and that was a, a game that caught both of our attention simply in the fact that we were stunned at how Riot dominated the first half. They jumped out to, a, to an eight to one lead. They scored the first point in the second half on a Callahan. To Fury's credit, they battled back. But boy, you dig yourself in an eight point hole like that, you're not gonna win too many. Yeah, you know, those teams, especially early in the season, do that to each other. A few weeks ago at Solstice, it was Fury that jumped out to a big lead. Big lead, Riot came back, tied it at 14. Fury won at 16-14. I'd not be surprised at all if they saw each other again tomorrow for the third time already in the young season, but you know, Boston has something to say about that. This offensive line for Brute Squad with Seville and Malinowski, and they cough it up. We should mention Leanne Hoffman back on the field for Brute Squad. Good to see Hoffman after she took a shot to the midsection early in this game. So Fury with a chance to grab their first lead. Dump it back over to Carolyn Finney. Finney sends it center of the field. Catching it is Cree Howard. Howard very explosive. Backdoor cut. Finney at the goal line. Looked like she had a chance to toss him there. Waited for a better option. Still waiting. It's all count on. She's forced to lob it up. Contact in the end zone. Catch was made. Okay, play on. Fajardo was able to haul it in. They're going to let the play continue, which is a score. Ness Fajardo with the goal. Ness Fajardo has been one of the leaders of Fury for a long time. Not a captain this year, but she's led the team as a captain in the past. Still certainly one of the foundational pieces Barely got the foot in bounds. You've seen Ness Fajardo play before. You know she's a lefty, but she's really not. She's a righty for most sports except Frisbee, tennis, basketball, baseball, golf. She'll play righty. Fajardo is a USA Ultimate board member. She was voted onto the board back in December of 2014. She'll be on that term up until December of 2017, serving a three-year term as they continue to blossom and continue to grow the, the sport of women's ultimate here in the United States. Yeah, certainly one of the, the leaders, the ambassadors for the sport. And it's, you know, there's no way we can mention all the accomplishments that each of these players on these teams have done. You know, so many of these players have traveled internationally to coach 
developing programs. They've volunteered and worked with Ultimate Peace, a great organization that fosters Ultimate in the Middle East, relationships between kids, conflict resolution, the lessons of the sport. And, you know, these players, in addition to being the best in the world, are the great ambassadors for the sport, too. Laura Bitterman pushes it over to Becky Malinowski. Malinowski. Other side to Kisa. Backhand toward the end zone. Brute squad looking to get in, and they do. Good throw, good catch. And Brute Squad counters Bitterman with her team high 13th goal of the tournament. I'm not entirely sure who Leanne Hoffman was targeting here. There were two cutters going deep. Kayla Jorgensen, the closest defender. She had good position, but just misread it ever so slightly. Mentioned two cutting down there. The other was Shelly Cohen, but the way the last couple of days have gone, if that disc is up and it's close to the end zone, it's been number 33, Laura Bitterman, coming down with it. What a tournament. Her 13th goal to lead the Brutes squad. University of Wisconsin product. Originally from Minnesota, but she's been in Boston for a while. Brutus went perfect in Pool A, 5-0. and Look at their victories, a five-point win over Heist, beat traffic by five, a six-point win over Showdown, dominated Fusion 15-5. Then their toughest battle, as expected, was with Scandal, a, a team that's making some adjustments this year early on in the circuit. They beat Scandal by a point, 13-12. And at the tournament, the number three seed. Well, the seeding really doesn't matter a lot for this particular format they go by last year's national placing and a lot of things have changed from last year to this season the first touch for lisa pitt Kaifley, who had a great game in the semifinals of the u.s open two years ago in raleigh fury in good position as they dump it back to romano romano on the far sideline snyder Really good spacing from Fury on this possession as they work it down the field. You know, a cohesiveness that you don't typically see this early in the season. Schneider lobs it to the center. Now they go in front of the end zone, making the catch. His son, she'll soft toss it through for the Fury score. That was a beautiful possession of offense. As one cutter vacated space to clear out, another filled in. And that just takes great timing. The disc skills obviously there. Nice grab on the doorstep of the end zone by Nancy Sun, former Pufal Award winner. Roche with the goal. Prominent figure in Canada in her day. The Canadian native, five foot eight inch player, 10th year player for this Fury program. She was part of that dominant run and when they won seven straight national championships. Jen LaRoche with her first goal, her sixth of the weekend. From a basketball background, she was the point guard and captain for the University of Ottawa, 97 to 2002. She's played for Team USA, but she still says she's a proud Canadian. Grew up in Quebec, moved to the Bay Area in 2005. And uh, evidence that age is very much irrelevant. And she is still close to the top of her game. Here's the pull by Fury. See if Boston can counter punch. Down a point early on in this semifinal. Rich squad with it. Now, interesting Pochi defense. This is not a true zone here because Fury's playing man downfield, but the handlers were kind of bunching up to try to stifle the downfield movement, getting in the cutting lanes. You can see the handler defender, Stephanie Lim, sneaking into the lane. Boston with good patience, finally an opening for Malinowski and she'll air it out. And it's taken away, no, it's caught at the front of the end zone. It looked like Fury had a chance to rip that away, but a good one-hand stab there for Boston and they tie it up. 
as Flannery McCardle holds it in. Great patience to hit Malinowski. She let it fly. Not surprised at all to see Flannery McCardle make this play. The former Carlton star did this regularly in a Syzygy jersey. And we talk about Boston's great pickups largely being from last year. McCardle might be the most influential pickup this year because she gives that downfield dynamic great in the air and a new dimension for Boston. Right away from Lisa Cooper at pretty good position defensively there for Fury. Good look at Flannery McCardle. You mentioned the Carleton College product of Baltimore, Maryland, her first year. She's 24 years old, brings good size to that offensive line. Malinowski, who's been the main distributor all three days, her seventh assist already, leading the charge in that handler position for Brew. At the first point of the game, there were four turnovers. Since then, three points in a row with no turns. The offense is starting to settle in. Emily Bacher with the pull for Brew. Offsides was called on Boston. And we'll do it again. And Mike Zalisk was the coach of Boston last year. He was a former Callahan winner himself. Not able to make the commitment this year, so Ariel Jackson spent a lot of time in the Bay Area after Finished up his PhD at Stanford. And when he got back to Boston, he reached out to Josh McCarthy, the head coach of Boston Ironside. He said, you know, might there be a coaching opportunity for me? And, you know, Josh McCarthy's been at the helm of Boston for a long time. Matt Rebholz was making the transition from playing to coaching. And it turned out that Brute needed a coach. Josh McCarthy mentioned it to Brute. Brute reached out to Ari Jackson that they would need somebody and they started talking in March. That really is ironic. He's familiar with this Fury program. He, he grew up in New Jersey, spent four years at Rutgers, played his final year of eligibility with Stanford, was on the West Coast as you mentioned, and now he's guiding Brute here into the semifinals of the U.S. Open and what they're hoping will be the successful first leg of the Triple Crown. Fury's Midi Chang. First forehand here. She's able to get the swing across. Fury looking to rotate. Has her off surveys. Flicks it up ahead to Carnahan. Carnahan is going to become such a safety valve for Fury's stack. Stall counts rising. They're going to look for number 22, thinking that she can get open. And she's a player that a good handler can throw open. Look at this chuck from Snyder. Looking for Carnahan, and she'll go up and make the catch. Right on cue, Sarah Carnahan, one of the premier female players in the mixed division, getting on the tally for the first time in this semifinal. This was another gorgeous possession. One of the world-class throws from Alex Snyder. This one might have floated a little more than she would have liked. But good position from Carnahan, and just incredible awareness. Just barely got that left foot in before the blue line. Carnahan in her first year with Fury last season was the leading scorer in goals and assists at the club championships for American Barbecue. Carnahan, another former basketball player, four-year starting point guard, University of Puget Sound. Twice made the D3 NCAA tournament, went all the way to the Elite Eight. And is become an incredible threat on the ultimate field. And Alex Snyder, I mean, th the number of communities around the world that she has impacted as a player, as a coach, as a person, it's astounding. You know, it's good to see her out here. Last year at Nationals, she was banged up, had a, a bad knee injury partial tear from meniscus, if I'm remembering correctly. And she played in Frisco, but she wasn't the same player. She said she's 100%. Certainly looks it. Looks the part this week. All of a sudden, the offense is on fire for both these teams. See if Brute can keep it rolling. Seville. Shake pass over to Cohen. Cohen sends it downfield, and it's deflected away. The D that time from Cree Howard. And this is a more textbook zone defense there. Howard was the deep, deep. 
Four-person cup for Fury. And Howard read the play well as the free safety. Cherrier looking back in. Nothing there, still surveying. She'll dump it back. It's a dangerous dump, but it's controlled. Nazarov, and they'll swing it to the far side to Howard. Howard takes a shot toward the end zone. She's looking for Duffy, and it's taken away. Seville with the interception. And Howard's going to watch the film and want that one back because it was one on four in the end zone. Four black jerseys enabling the D. And a good decision there. Brute back with it. Each team with back-to-back -back turnovers. Brute squad slowly working their way up. And they nearly coughed it up. You can see the communication there between Malinowski and Tajima. Shot downfield, but it's under throw. The hole's incomplete. They were looking for McCardle again, and she was open. And Hoffman had the opening. She had the angle. As soon as she released it, she knew she just didn't put the exact right float on the disc that was necessary. Yuri's Howard marked by Cohen. Oh my. And it's taken away through it right into the lap of Leanne Hoffman. Love to give Hoffman credit for the D, but she didn't have to do much. It was a 4th of July gift right there, right in her lap. Hoffman trying to make them pay. Sniffing at that red zone, dumps it back over to Tajima. Good poach by Nazarov, helping out of the Malinowski upline cut, but Boston wisely swings the disc and finds McCardle. Second time they found number 44, McCardle holds it in. A wide receiver foot drop on the side of the end zone to haul it in safely. Now, patience around the end zone is huge. Claudia Tajima has been so good for Boston as well, someone we haven't mentioned yet, but Tajima, another member of that Beach Worlds team in Dubai, that one gold. Claudia out of Tufts. And she brings a lot of toughness to the Boston squad. Especially if Boston's offense turns it over, she might be the best defender on their primary O-line. And let's not forget that was all set up with the unforced turnover, so Brute takes advantage of it. They tie it up at four piece. We've talked about Beach quite a bit today, first in the mixed division, and now here in the women's, we're seeing some of these players excel in both arenas, if you will. What's the biggest difference when you talk to these players between Beach and, and what we're watching here with, with, with Ultimate? Yeah, you know, on, on the sand, you're not as fast, and you also typically don't throw it as far because it's a shorter field. It's usually more windy. So it's, you know, changing direction on the sand. You typically can't jump as high. So a lot of shorter throws into the wind, and. You know, some players are just faster on sand than you'd expect them to be. It's, it's very much a different skill running ones. Good cut by Howard. She completely lost her defender. Yeah, able to create some space with that cut. Cassie Wong trying to stick with her. Some contact. It's hauled in safely by Marika Austin. And then Fury threw it away. They're trying to hook up with LaRoche. Root with a break opportunity here. Let's see if they can push it down the other end. I think a pick was called yep. downfield. That's why Wong was so wide open. Wong, another newcomer on Boston this year. Played college ultimate at Brown. And Amber Sinecro, the most veteran Brute squad player. Ten years on the team and not even in her late 20s. She's 26. It's a huck downfield, but way past the intended targets. And that was the question you asked Ariel Jackson yesterday in his first year taking over this program, and, and with a lot of new faces already on this roster this year, you know, how he has went about kind of merging with the team, learning about the team, and, and he talked about he relied on his captains a great deal in the early goings. Yeah, he also reached out to Mike Zalis, the coach last year. Kevin Sisna for Fury talked to Maddie Sang, who's been nothing but supportive as you would expect from perhaps the most positive person in the world, Matt Singh. Good layout as Fury maintains possession. Howard turns faces. Looks to go forehand. It is interesting to inquire, you know, how much of the new coach 
do, do you you know try to you don't want to institute a completely new system because clearly these are successful teams doing what they're doing making some minor tweaks that's a gorgeous break give the credit to Cody Fong Fong able to get the break and that set up all sorts of options in the end zone for Fury the pivot here the pivot right across it Nicely done. And you know, in the stat sheet, unless you're keeping track of hockey assists, Kong doesn't show, uh, Fong doesn't show up. Dariani in the end zone. Two years ago, Manisha Dariani was in a cast on the sideline at the U.S. Open. A leg injury. She's back out there. Fury program out of San Francisco won the U.S. Open back in 2013. Mentioned their run at national prominence, nine national titles. They had seven straight from 06 through 2012. They've represented the U.S. at eight world championships, nine straight club finals. The resume just goes on and on. Yeah, you, you, know, you say program. those numbers, and they just sort of like go in one ear and out the other. You don't necessarily real like eight world championship appearances. The, the longevity of the program is it's unthinkable. High, high floating disc got caught up in the air. And you know, you ask how have they done it? Yes, they're very talented, but it's the culture that they've created more than anything. You know, this weekend, Fury has not relied on just their top players. Everybody has played. No one on Fury and the leaders in assists or goals because everybody contributes. Downfield, Huck, and it's caught for the score. Leanne Hoffman hauls it in on a beautiful Huck for Brute. What does it say that the shortest person in the end zone comes up with the sky? Hoffman read this the best. This was for Malinowski. Yeah. And it wasn't like Hoffman just sort of laid back. She went up with her one hand. Shelly Cohen, the former North Carolina Pleiades star, picks up the assist. Jorgensen, Fletcher for Fury, both in position. But it's the tiniest of those four girls in that pile of humanity. Hoffman, who comes down with it. I was chatting with someone else in the women's division, uh, someone whose opinion I really respect, and asked her about Leanne Hoffman. And she said, she's becoming as good as anybody in the women's division. And she might be becoming the best all-around player. And, you know, she obviously looks athletic, but at five foot six, she's certainly not towering over many of the players she's going against. But her speed, her quickness, her intelligence, 24 years old. Great future ahead. This has been fun. Got yeah, this nice, is exactly what we were anticipating. A nice flow back and forth. Nobody's led by more than one so far. Sophia Hurst with the mark. A little bit of a space opens up for Fletcher downfield, but then it's tipped away and a turnover and back. Comes Brute with a chance, possibly for a break here. Triggering the offense will be Bajor. Bajor forced to dump it off to Angela Zhu. Zhu, second year player, just 19 years old. Out of Amherst, Massachusetts, you talk about a city that has produced a lot of talent in the sport of ultimate. This is McCardle, who already has a couple of goals, dumping it back to Bajor. Bajor, little backhand lob, making the bid that time was Hurst Cube. Well, Hurst Cube with a misfire, and that's going to be an easy interception for Sun. Fury a chance on the transition. She'll lob it downfield. Fletcher's there, and she'll make the catch just shy of the goal line. But she'll put the finishing touches, maybe, and she does, as that one hung up in there. But Clancy was able to snatch it, and Fury takes advantage of the turnover. When I started playing Ultimate, 
you would see veterans do what Alden Fletcher just did. She's gonna shed her hat when she realizes that she's going off deep. She ripped it off, get it out of the way, and then make the grab. Now, that is an old trick. I used to use that in slow pitch softball days when you're in the infield and you go back to catch the ball. Get rid of that hat quick. It was Nancy's son who intercepted that floaty swing. <laughs> and Fletcher picking up the assist. There's Kevin Cisna. Long time Davis, California resident. Grew up Northern California, about five hours north of Davis, but he's been there 17 years. Started playing as a freshman in college. Walking to the dining hall, saw some chalk on the ground, pointing toward the fields where there was something called ultimate going on. He thought it looked like fun, gave it a try. Now he's not a Nationals guy in college. He was a player from 98 to 03, never made it to Nationals, but in recent years, the Davis program has really excelled. You know, we'll see San Francisco Revolver later today, and, and five guys on Revolver are out of UC Davis more than any other school. Kevin has coached them nine of the last 11 years. He was a part of the championship jam teams, uh, the 2008 team that won the title. Even though he was injured that year, he still got a gold medal. He was there on the sidelines. Sharing that experience. See the defense right now by Fury, one of the terms in ultimate, the cup, the wall of defenders that surround the thrower in the zone defense. Typically that usually entails three defenders charging at the handler. Mixing up a bit of a different variation here to try to slow down Brood, who's had success offensively. Both teams looking good on the offensive end at times. And I think we had a pick called downfield here, and that's why we have a stoppage. I think we had multiple picks called. Players were colliding with each other on this side stack that Boston has created. One thing to keep an eye on as we go deeper into this game, Boston's ability to pull away from the opposition in second halves of games. He talked about that last night, Ariel Jackson, about yeah. how great a defensive team this is. He knew the offense was going to take a while to come along, but they're very deep. They have a lot of fresh legs on that defensive line, and he really felt that that was a big difference in the Thursday and Friday pool play games. Heck of a grab by Shelly Cohen on the sidelines, and two throws later, Brute Squad in the end zone. Laura Bitterman again. Finds the pay dirt for Brute. And they tie it up at six apiece. Back and forth, these two heavyweights continue to go. Now you talked about the defensive effort from Brute throughout. Ooh. They called her in. That was really close. But Hoffman usually very wise with the disc in her hands. Bitterman always in the end zone. Now the offense at this stage of the season is a work in progress, but wearing teams down with their defensive depth. You now you get a break, you can put a whole new line of defenders out there. Very fresh, great energy, and not much of a talent drop off. That's the depth that you're talking about. And that was really the key to the game. You know, staying disciplined in the offensive system, just keep the disc moving, and then defensively, just keep running, wear the teams down. You know, this team last year ran predominantly a, a spread offense, and, and this year, Coach Jackson has brought more of the vertical stack. So, you know, as a former player, how long typically does that take to really implement where, you're, where your team is, is executing that pretty much full circle without having much thought to it? You know, it, it takes a while, and it takes repetitions of playing with each other. You know, these teammates are, are mostly familiar with each other, and they've had a bunch of practices over the last month or two to get ready for the U.S. Open. But in order to click on all cylinders, you, know, you want to know what each of your teammates is going to do before they do it. And sort of have this unspoken cutting pattern. And just it, it, if the disc goes here, here's what's going to happen. If the disc goes here, here's what's going to happen. That takes a lot of time. Rudin and Clancy along with Snyder bringing the disc downfield for Fury. Romano has it, gets it over to Anna Nazarov. Nazarov marked in the play by Emily Bacher. 
Nice swing pass of soaring up to grab that was Sarah Carnahan again using that tall frame. She's made a living on in the mixed level. There's Schneider, she's been deadly early on to Nazaroff. Nazaroff puts on the brakes, comes back center field with it inside the red zone, Fury looking at some options. Schneider with some room, it's a loose mark. She'll zip it in. Let's see, is she in? Yes, she is, for the score. And Mono out of San Francisco, California. And back and forth again, this trend continues. San Francisco holds serve, if you will, 7-6. As good as Boston's defense is, when Fury is playing like this, I'm not sure how you stop him. You know, Michaela Meister was a star at College Nationals for Stanford. Nazaroff on that upline cut was unbelievable. And then that backhand break to Romano, Snyder makes it look easy. You know, not a very active mark on Snyder. I'd say maybe the one thing that Ari Jackson might talk about is a little bit more active, aggressive on the mark. But when you're moving the disc as quickly as Fury is, it's tough to get set. Romano, a UC Santa Barbara product, scoring her fourth goal in three days. Another assist for Alex Schneider. 7-6, Fury on top. Entertaining first half between these two teams, Groot Squad and Fury, each looking to punch their ticket into the finals tomorrow. Now Fury had the one deep shot that Carnahan caught. Six of the other seven goals have been scored in the red zone. And, you know, at this point of the season, Fury, six of eight in red zone offense. You know, that's the, the spot of the field where offense becomes tougher, obviously. There's less real estate to work with. Defense doesn't need to respect the deep shot as much because there isn't much deep territory to cover. And Fury's been calm, composed, and collected near the goal line. Yeah, this early in the season to have that type of efficiency deep in the opponent's territory. So Brood Squad back on the march. Forcing back in, they try to get the break as they come back toward the center. Handling it is Paula Seville. Little floater toward the front, caught. Hoffman has it. Leanne Hoffman with some time, she'll wait for a better option. Finally has to settle on the dump to Tajima. Tajima looking left, backhand flick, there it is. Another goal for Laura Bitterman, and Brute counters. Could say the same thing about Boston's offense. You know, Fury's playing, you know, hard defense, but when the offense is in groove, when there's very little wind, it's tough to stop these gals. And Tajima just knifed this throw through there. Not a huge window to find Bitterman, who shook off Dariani. What makes Bitterman so dangerous? Why is she having the type of success here early on in this tournament trail? I mean, it's a couple things. First of all, quickness and shiftiness, her ability to change direction quickly. But perhaps even more important than that is the field sense of knowing where and when to cut. And obviously she's you know, played on Brute Squad for five years. She's developed chemistry with the top throwers. They know they can expect her to be open. Now, these are two teams that, as we said, have so much talent. They're, they're missing a few pieces each. You know, Boston is without Leela Tunnell, former Callahan Award winner. There's Christy Kim. She hurt her knee on Thursday. Sarah Cook's out with an injury. Right. Now, Tunnell's certainly the, the most important piece that's not here. You know, it just changes the dynamic. Might be Root Squad's best deep thrower. Canel, the 2011 Callahan Award winner. And Fury is, is without Lakshmi Narayan, missing Claire Desmond. Those are two all-stars. Snyder, Nazarov handling as Fury brings it up. Across the center field strike, turning and looking. This is Clancy who has a goal. Dangerous throw upfield is Corral. Sabrina Fong. Just to reverse it, back to Nazaroff. Get it to the far sideline, Kayla Jorgensen. Looking at a couple of cutters, nothing open downfield, so she comes back center. Real tight mark applied there by Bacher. But it doesn't work as they were able to get it to Snyder. Kind of a little backward scenario from what we've seen in the first half to send us to halftime. Snyder, who's been dishing out the disc in the first half, finally the recipient of one in the end zone. 
The beauty of this possession was the resets. So smart. Earlier in the point, it was Snyder clearing out, opening the space for Nazarov. Here, Nazarov getting it back to the handler set. Just really intelligent cutting all around the field. Nazarov clears out, and as she does, from the front of the stack, the reset come. That's Fletcher. And sensing the open space near the front pylon. You know, on some teams, you'd have multiple players cutting to that pylon there. Fury very much in system, and even up 8-7, they're still making adjustments as Nancy Sun and Nesfa Hardo talk it over. Boy, an entertaining first half in the women's semifinal. Fury from San Francisco with an 8-7 lead over Brute Squad. In the first half, you know, we talk so much about the defense of Brute Squad, but yet the two offenses really look pretty sharp in the first half of action. Yeah, early in the game, you know, first point featured a bunch of turnovers, but then offense is holding serve, many points without turnovers. Just a lot of really good, solid O for both squads. Two seed Fury from San Francisco with an 8 7 lead on the three seed from Brute Squad. As we're going to check in with Boston Brute Squad, Emily Bacher is a fifth year player with Brute. And first off, Emily, a uh, well played first half. You look at it 8 7 Fury on top. What are you guys going to take away from the first half and carry into the second half as far as adjustments go? I mean, I think that we're close, but we're not quite there. Uh, we are just about a half a step from turning the switch on on defense and really getting a bunch of turns. We really need to do a better job about taking away their easy undercuts uh, and helping our teammates with the deep shots. Um, so we're looking both to step up our man-to-man -man D and to help, up, help out our teammates. And when we get the turn, we just have to trust our system. Right now, we're getting a little bit frantic, myself included. Um, so that's what we're really focusing on for the em second half. Emily, I know you're a defensive player. You pride yourself on your defense. Are you able to appreciate how smooth those offenses both looked on a day when the wind's not much of a factor? Oh, absolutely. And actually, surprisingly, you guys may be surprised at how strong the wind actually is when you're throwing down here. Um, this is just a really skilled group of throwers out here. And we expected it to be a little more of an upwind downwind game than it is, but that really speaks to the skill of the throwers. And it is hard to get a D. <laughs> it's early in the season. You guys are still crafting your personality. But after a few days of competing with this team, what is the 2015 Brute Squad personality about? Our personality really is about turning on the defense and the grit. Um, we're trying to take an attitude where we're OK with making mistakes on offense as long as we can fall back on our D um, and just turn it on. And so far, we've showed in this tournament that the second half is really where we turn that on. Hopefully, hopefully later in the season, we can turn it on from the start. but. Right now, we're, we're looking at the second half. Emily, good luck in the second half. Thanks, guys. Emily Bacher, and she mentioned that second half surge from Brute. They've relied on it all weekend here in Westchester. We're at halftime. Fury on top by a point in the women's semifinal. And welcome back to Westchester, Ohio. Halftime of the women's semifinal. Fury of San Francisco with an 8-7 lead on Brute Squad. We're now joined by Fury head coach Kevin Sisna. And coach, coming into this game, you knew Brute Squad strength was their defense, yet your offense was very precise in the first half. How were you able to crack the Brute D? I think we just focused on moving the disc quickly, uh, taking the shots when they were there. Kevin, you guys really impressed me with the way you reset the disc. I know you don't want to give away all your secrets, but what, what's the basic ethos for Fury's resets? I, th I think we're just committing to if there's no downfield looks, then we're going we're gonna to take the easy ones in the backfield. And about your red zone offense, at one point you one guys, I think, you know, scored six of your first seven goals in the red zone. Do, do you guys want to stretch the field deep, or are you happy just working it down five, ten yards at a time? No, I, I think we're going to stretch it deep in the second half. We're going to look for some more deep and shots. Finally. To who? Um, all of our big cutters, anyone can go deep, and we're looking to hit all of them. What's it been like coaching Fury this weekend, your first uh, tournament coaching Fury? Uh, it's been a pleasure. They're a great team to work with. I love it. They're looking good, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. Kevin Sisna and Fury, he mentioned distributing the disc. Alex Snyder with a couple of assists, powering Fury to a one-point lead here at the break. Beautiful Independence Day in Westchester, Ohio. Welcome back to Lakota West High School, the setting for the 2015 U.S. Open Ultimate Championship. San Francisco on top of Boston 
by a score of eight to seven. A very entertaining first half. Sean Kenny alongside Evan Leffler. And you talk about offensive execution. We saw some mishaps early, but boy, they both responded quickly and found their group. It was funny. We featured Anna Nazaroff and Leanne Hoffman on the open of the broadcast. They each had layout Ds in the first point, but since then, there hasn't been a whole lot of defense in this game. Not that they haven't been trying. But good offense usually beats good defense, especially when it's not that breezy. And Fury's offense has been smart. Boston's has been efficient and effective as well. Boston's worked the deep game a little bit more. Leanne Hoffman airing it out. And Laura Bitterman, even though she's not the tallest, has read the disc well and used her speed and guile to come down with possession in the end zone. Fury's offense has been predicated on resets and moving the disc side to side near the end zone. Timing their cut to the front pylon perfectly on more than one occasion. Audia Tajima, solid first half. And again, Boston not hesitating at all to letting it fly. It's going to be interesting to see whether Boston can ramp up the defensive effort like Emily Bacher talked about. She's the defensive captain for this team, Sarah Carnahan. Her first year on Fury and what an addition she has been and will continue to be. Boston looked at McArdle quite often early. He had, she had two early goals as Brute and Fury just kept continuing to go back and forth. You see, most of those goals are Boston taking shots. This one from Shelly Cohen. A couple bodies in the area. Malinowski didn't read it right, but Leanne Hoffman again making the play. It was Fury, though, who scored to send the game to halftime, typical fashion for San Francisco in the first half. You might say that Boston's offense is a little more exciting, but Fury efficient and effective, and that's championship caliber offense. You take a look at the offense for brute force, they are getting the goals from the usual suspect. What a tournament for Laura Bitterman. Three more first half goals to power Boston. But on the opposite side, Alex Snyder, a solid first half, a goal and two assists, plus a couple of helpers along the way from Alden Fletcher. A good one here in Westchester. Fury on top, 8-7, second half action right around the corner. Everybody having a good time here in Westchester as we get set for the second half. Welcome back to the semifinal round of the 2015 U.S. Open Ultimate Championships. Fury with an 8-7 lead over Boston Brood Squad, but it will be Fury who will receive the disc first. Herskew, Verhalen, Senecrope, Zoo, Murphy, some of those frontline defenders for Brood Squad. So let's see what Fury can do out of the gate here in the second half. Something really has caught the attention of Coach Jackson along the near side. He was really barking out instructions to his squad after the pull. There's a shot downfield, and that's going to be a catch along the side. Good layout there by Nazarov to keep both feet in. Nazarov near the goal line, a low zip. That was otherworldly field awareness by Nazarov. Fury threatening. Rudin is forced to dump it back to Schneider. She's been the trigger point for much of the afternoon. Schneider goes back in to Sabrina Fall. Long being applied to tight mark by Herskew. They go back to Schneider with it. Nice defense from Angela Zhu shutting down that open side cut made by Nazaroff. Schneider looking for the forehand, zips it underneath. A little soft toss into a tight window. And again, we're back at that doorstep. Jorgensen, five yards away from the goal line, looking. Oh, she has some time. Dumps it back to Snyder. Top D here by Boston. And we have a call away from the action. Again, Nazaroff so used to just making that sort of horizontal, sometimes strike cut from the front of the stack to get possession of the disc. And both times, Zoo was right in her pocket. See if they can get a clean break off the vertical. Schneider looking. Nope, nothing open. Good downfield D. Give and go action with Schneider. Still short of the goal line. And we have contact up top. Roche making contact with Schneider. You can tell the intensity has picked up with Brood Squad here in this first defensive look. Even though Fury gets in, they had to earn it three yards away, but it's Carnahan with her second goal. Three to four with a hammer to the end zone for Sarah Carnahan. 
Jurgensen's throw never came back in as much as she wanted. Nazarov able to get that foot inbound, stretching across the sideline to keep possession alive. And then the number of throws that Fury executed the here to work it in. You know, this possession was probably more about Brood Squad's defense, forcing 13 red zone throws before the hammer over the top to the break side for Carnahan. Remarkable stuff. Sarah Carnahan scoring her second goal of today's semifinal. We mentioned Carnahan, Germany native, uses her size well, five feet eight inches tall, first year with the Fury program. Spent some time with American Barbecue, Mischief, Metro, mainly mixed teams, but having success early on, and they're hoping for a big summer from number 22. And a critical goal early here in this second half for San Francisco. Root force with their first touch in the second half offensively. Zipperstein floats it over to Seville. A lot of space to work. You see that cut defense by Fury, the zone look. Four girls around the disc. Best way to attack a cut. Move the disc. Quick throws. Dumps and swings. Force that cup to run. So you're seeing too much standing right here by brute force, would you say, initially? Yeah, okay, you want to get the disc from sideline to sideline. It's tempting to look downfield. That's how you'll break the zone eventually, but make that cup get tired. Tajima, Kisau, this is Tajima with it. Zipper steam. Again, not a lot of space here by Brute. Surrounded with the cup is Seville. Gets it up ahead safely to Hoffman. Hoffman comes near side to Malinowski. And Malinowski's pass is deflected away. Good read that time. Breaking through was Nancy Sun. An eight-year player, one of the veteran leaders of this Fury defense. Malinowski not a primary handler. She got the disc, gained a little yardage, wanted to force it in there, but the lane wasn't open. Fury off the turnover. Let's see what Sun can do. Sends it upfield. It's caught. This is Cree Howard. Backhand Hawk. 50-50, and it's tipped away nicely by Kisa. But there is a possible foul called back on the release point. They called a stall oh. on Sun even before. I thought it was Howard calling a foul on her around backhand. A stall was called. But a stall was called by Seville. They, hail, they upheld a stall, but this is one of the things I don't like about the rules. We're wasting time getting everybody to try to reset in the exact same position. Just let them move. I mean, they're all kind of gradually moving anyway. You can't replicate the scenario precisely. Let them get set. And now Boss is going to take a timeout, so that whole reset situation meant nothing because they're going to reset after the timeout. Group. Squad using their first of two timeouts in this second half. They will take some time to discuss down a break here. Nine seven Fury leading by two in the second half. A very important point here for Boston. Fury's not going to typically blow a three point lead in the second half. Now Fury's such an interesting story, and I, I say that based on their performance yesterday with Riot. I mean, that was the anticipated matchup in pool play, and man, before you could blink an eye, Riot had built that 8-1 halftime lead, just flat out dominated, yet Fury was able to respond. It ended up 15-10, so they showed some guts in that second half battling back, and then their offensive execution here today in the semifinal round no hangover, it appears, from that loss. No, I wouldn't expect there to be. You know, in the Fury Riot matchup, those teams know each other so well. And, you know, sometimes one team will be on fire and, you know, up 8 1 at the half. I think that's the exception rather than the norm. I don't think Riot is 
seven points and a half better than Fury by any means. Right, and Fury were in the same pool, which was a little bit surprising, because I think people thought those were the two best teams in the tournament coming in. Uh, Brute Squad certainly threatening to be in that top tier as well. And after the turnover. Killer, killer turnover. After they change possession because of the stall call and the timeout utilized, they cough it up. Yeah, that's a killer. As a coach, that has to drive you nuts. It'll make a young Ariel Jackson age real quickly. He had no gray hairs last night in the hotel when we talked to him, but those types of mistakes will drive you nuts. Fury already with the break and a two-point advantage. They swing it over far side. This is Howard. Howard gets to the center, but we have a call. Nesfa Hardo was the one who caught the disc, like Boston's Dory Zipperstein. Will not be contested, so they will restart. Fajardo. This is where Fury has been relentless today. In the red zone, very patient approach. This is where they have made their living and why they are leading by two. See if they can keep that hot trend going, and they do. Bingo, right on cue. It's another one. This time it's Fajardo pulling down her second score of the afternoon. Yeah, Cree Howard didn't get the goal or the assist, but she was responsible for that goal. She opened up space with her fake deep cut, then came underneath for that snag. Look quickly upfield, nobody was moving. So then her attention changes. How can I break the mark to get the reset? And by finding her wide open teammate, Liz Duffy, in the middle of the field, Fury easily capitalizes. Liz Duffy has been in the women's division for a very long time. Played eight years for Seattle Riot. Never imagined that she could join San Francisco Fury, but moved to the Bay, wanted to play on a top team. She's traveled the world. Duffy has to play ultimate when her son was 10 months old. They got him an infant passport, and he traveled internationally to be on the sidelines for a Frisbee tournament. World-class traveler by the age of one. Elizabeth Duffy, 40-year-old veteran leader of this team. Two veterans hooking up there. Fajardo, if you recall, was a former team captain for Fury. Duffy, eight years with the Seattle Riot, moved to Atlanta, played a few years with Ozone, and now has found a home with Fury as one of their senior leaders on the team. And San Francisco in a good position, leading by three. We talked about the second half dominance by Brute Squad. They're really going to have to turn it up a couple of notches, try to get back into it down three here. Critical possession. Swing it over to Sinecro. With the mark is Nazarov. There's a backhand huck downfield looking for Hoffman. Hoffman trying to run underneath it, lays out, and it falls just in front of her incomplete. Oh boy, she gave it her all. A couple inches taller, she has it. Yeah, it's a decent looking throw from Bacher, but just not enough float. You like the decision. You know, it's a decision I would have made back in my day, but she's told us at halftime that they need to take better care of the disc, so I'm That's not sure I she likes you. the decision. Right. So Fury in a golden position. Opportunity here. Marika Austin turns and faces, picked up by Hoffman. Oh, she my. nearly threw it away. Oh, what a save and a layout by Give Stephanie help. Lim. And first team All-American at Stanford. Now Fury downfield incomplete. They were looking for Austin again after Stephanie Lim saved possession. And, you know, in, in baseball, you see great layouts in the outfield a couple times a week. And ultimate, you see great layouts a bunch of times every point. That grab by Lim, you know, somewhat inconsequential. Esau on the back end. Oh. Having a step downfield, Bitterman makes the catch. Tremendous bid from Dariani. Hoffman surveying. Think she might be forced to dump it. That's what she does. They'll reset the attack. 
Boston must score here. Look at the layout and the catch on the score. Emily Bacher, who we talked to at halftime, there's some of the focus she was talking about. Giving up the body, hauling it in, an all-important point for Brute Squad. July 4th, and these girls are laying out like this is the national semifinal. Dariani went full extension, came up shy. Then the reset, tumbling over. Bacher was open. They let her. She gets horizontal for the score. Just another day in the life of a high-level ultimate player. Only Bacher in her fifth season, known for her defensive ability and part of that deep, deep defensive unit for Brood Squad. But that time, showing you she's an all-around player, hauling it in, played for Michigan. We mentioned the Amherst, Massachusetts native. Yeah, you mentioned Amherst, Mass oh, before. Man. So many Jumping players out. come from Amherst, and you know, Tina Booth deserves so much credit for that. The legendary coach from Amherst, Amherst Regional High School, now coaching the UMass men. She's going to coach a club team. A bunch of the UMass guys are going to play on as well. They had a very impressive run at college nationals in Milwaukee on Memorial Day weekend. And a good pull here by Brute Squad as this will go out of bounds. This will allow Fury good starting position as they begin this possession, leading by two. Brute looking for their defense to come up with a stop. It's been a very quiet afternoon for Lisa McCaithley, and we thought she might be more of a factor. Really haven't called her name much. The phenomenal star, young star, third-year player. California Santa Barbara, part of the Burning Skirts program. She had to pack a lot of clothes. She's one of the U23 players that's going to be heading to London pretty soon. Going to train in Chicago for a stretch, and Lisa will be on the U23 mixed team. She'll have uh, Jonathan Nethercutt, this year's Callahan Award winner, to throw to her. Simon Higgins, who we'll see with Revolver on that team as well. Here's the turnover that Brute Squad was hoping for. Now the million dollar question can they capitalize? A pick called. Agon Lou from Ames, Iowa. She may be a little sad today. Her former teammates, Chad Larson experience losing earlier in the mixed semifinals to Ellipsis from Australia. And yeah, they missed Megan Lou. She would have, you know, I'm not sure she would have stopped Cat Phillips, but she would have given a good effort. And another stoppage, I believe, another pick call downfield. So back to back picks. Intensity picking up. I think both these teams realize the importance of this possession, especially for Brute Squad. She gets the pull within one. Chelsea Murphy. Forced to go back in. Now they'll take a shot toward the end zone. Off the fingertips. Incomplete. Lou at a step on Andrea Romano, but just could not haul it in. To be a huge turning point if Fury can go 70 yards the other direction. That would have got it within one. Here's a Hawk, a rare deep shot for Fury today. Cree Howard goes up, makes the catch. Howard then quickly gets rid of it. A juggling grab by Duffy. Elizabeth Duffy able to keep concentration, keep the scoring chance alive. A backhand flip into the end zone for the score. And Fury celebrates Lisa Cooper. First year player with the program, able to get in. The long huck set it up though, Evan. Yeah, gorgeous shot from Romano. You expect Cree Howard to go up and make that catch. The juggling snag there, a little dicey, but no the, harm done. Did you see the smile on Duffy when she finally firmly had control of the pancake grab? Oh, for good reason. <laughs> and Cree Howard, I mean, there's, there's nothing that she doesn't do well. I mean, she's a deep threat as we see, but around the goal line, she can move the disc, break in the mark, and she's just a, such a smart decision maker in these big spots. And where it looked like Mag and Lou is gonna score and make it 10-9, goes off her fingertips, 70 yards the other way, Fury back in front by three. Well, that's one thing for folks maybe who are just jumping into the sport. You talk about momentum. 
in the sport of ultimate. What's it like on the sidelines? Do you feed off, you know, that, that, that's a two-point swing, what we just saw there. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, especially if you're on the sideline, you know, thinking about going on the field after you've got back within one. It's deflating when that catch isn't made, then they go the other direction. You know, like any sport, mental toughness is about putting the last play behind you and moving on. You miss a big free throw, you gotta go back to the line, step up with confidence and knock it down. Shooters wanna keep shooting. But for sure, in terms of energy and emotion, missed opportunities are killers. The coaching defense here by Fury, 11-8, San Francisco back up three. Backhand Huff downfield. Hoffman, the playmaker, makes the catch. I'll say just shy of the goal line, she'll toss it up ahead, and now we have a call before she can release the disc. Contact just in front of the end zone. We'll start the count at four for this reset for Lee and Hoffman. Yeah, it looked like Hoffman You're was saying, fouled, but him. the foul was actually Hoffman setting a pick unintentionally, but Boston's Paula Seville ran Anna Nazaroff right through her, and no harm done. Seville takes care of business in the goal line. Hoffman the assist. The former Callahan Award winner at Michigan, Seville with the goal. Malinowski's taking some shots that haven't worked out, but this one was on target. Hoffman had a few steps, and that's more than she needs. And the pivot there is what enabled her to find that opening. I mean, a good cut from Seville, bluffing to the break side. If Hoffman doesn't pivot to threaten that throw, she might not be able to get that open side shot off because the mark was cheating just a little bit. If you're a young player, even if you have no intention of throwing, you pivot to the break side, it opens everything up on the open side. Something I learned when I was young, and it transformed my abilities as a hammer. Good look at Lee and Hoffman and the type of weekend Hoffman's that she has ready. enjoyed. Already 16 assists for Hoffman. Such a humble player. You know, back in her day at Northwestern, all of her teammates, a lot of the community in the ultimate world wanted her to put out a promotional video for the Callahan Award. She wouldn't do it. She didn't want that national prestige brought to her individually. Her, fo her whole focus solely is on the team. I mean, she's just that type of personality, just embodies the spirit of this sport. Yeah, you see that a lot in Ultimate. More often than not, it's, it's people like you and me that want to hype the individuals, trying to create some stars. But there are a lot of very soft-spoken stars that do it their own way. You know, some college programs, not just you know individuals making the choice, but some college programs won't make any nominations for the Callahan Award. A lot of great players from Carlton were never nominated because Carlton does not nominate individuals because they think it's all about the team and that's why they're successful. See the foul call downfield. Fury maintains possession. 11-8, San Francisco on top. Trying to force the forehand along the near sideline. They'll try to swing it. They get it to Schneider. She completes the swing, far wing to Sabrina Falk. trying to backdoor cut, but she is being shadowed tightly. Good defense by Senecro. And a dangerous toss up, but it's corralled. Jorgensen makes the catch, skidding down on both knees. Back over to Fong, and a timeout taken. Timeout taken by San Francisco. As head coach Kevin Cisna wants to talk it over, you get two timeouts in each half, and I think a good position to use it, leading by two. You know, we, we mentioned this team and how patient they have been with their offensive approach, but it looked like they were a bit out of sync on that last run downfield, so we thought a good time to use it. Yeah, it was Cody Fong that called the timeout, but certainly Kevin Sisney e eager to talk near the end zone. Another, you know, two-point swing coming up here. Either Fury takes a three-point lead or Boston gets within one. Now, I asked Kevin Sisna yesterday what were your first impressions of you know being around this team regularly and going to practices and you know being the leader 
And so the first thing that struck me was just how much team matters. You know, building players, focusing on spirit, getting everyone involved. And on some other teams, that's not as imperative across the, the table. And you know, he's, he's coached mostly men's ultimate. Certainly different, different coaching college age men who are still very much developing their skills and might need a little kick in the butt sometimes compared to these women who are so self-motivated, so individually accomplished. It's a different challenge for them. So after the timeout, they lob it to Schneider, gets rid of it quickly to the end zone and making the grab in tight headquarters is Cherrier. Anna Cherrier holds it in. Her first year with Fury. Not a lot of room for mistake there, but she was able to keep the concentration. Lock those hands around the disc you know, for the, the point. The thing about Fury is what, after they score a goal, they celebrate whether they score the goal or not. But this is an encouraging sign from Alex Snyder. Mobility that she did not have at Club Nationals last fall in Frisco. But to that point, you know, I was focusing yesterday afternoon on the Scandal Brute Squad game. It was sort of a, adjacent to the scan, to the Fury Riot game, but obviously Scandal Brute Squad was much closer in pool play. I would look over to Fury Riot and I would tell that somebody just scored. And I wasn't always sure who scored because both teams celebrate after every goal like they both score. They put their hands in the air and it's that body language of positivity, part of the culture that each of those programs have built. One of the star players with the Ellipsis team, Shell Phillips has spent some time with this Fury squad. And it's interesting you mentioned that because she told me yesterday one of the biggest things that she has taken away from her time with Fury was reading positive body language. The way they approach the game, no matter what circumstances develop on the field, everything is kept positive. And that was the big glaring thing. The first thing she popped out was, they're so positive, and their body language shows it each and every play. You can't tell if they're up 10 or down 10. It's like Tom Cruise and a few good men saying, everything that happens, you need to make it look like you expected it to happen. You control it. That was his most famous line from that movie, right? <laughs> Maybe not. You can't handle the truth, Andy. <laughs> <Eddie. laughs> All right. Brute squad down three, 12 9, San Francisco on top. Shelly Cohen. See this cup defense by Fury. Brute not getting a lot of movement. Real aggressive up top with Cherrier and Anna Nazarov, the two top defenders on that cup. Jumping into the fray is Duffy as they swing it far side. Paula Seville. Tight roping the far side, keeping the feet in as Kiesel with the catch. Here we go, White! Get it! Get it off, Rotate it. Malinowski has not been shy to let her fly today. Gradually they bring it across center field line. The spacing for Boston could be a little improved here. Malinowski sensed it going to the far side of the field. That's well done. They found Cohen and then Malinowski coming up from the weak side. Malinowski bluffed the deep shot. She gets it right back. Looking right, now look left, forced to dump it back. Good defensive rotation, good trip defensively by this unit from Fury. They're making Boston work. Malinowski. Looking toward the end zone, does not take a shot. Instead, sliding to the disc is Seville. She floats it to the pylon for the score. Patient approach, Shelly Cohen. Able to get in the front corner of the end zone. And the Brute Squad counter right back with a goal. 12-10 Fury. Sometimes against a zone defense, you, know, you usually have three handlers back, but if they're playing a four-person cup, sometimes it could be helpful to have a fourth handler. At the very least, having one of the wings move back into the sideline handler spot, and that's what happened here. Malinowski in good position. 
And then an easy lane to the end zone for Shelly Cohen. Cohen, one of those first year players for coach Ariel Jackson. Spent her college years with North Carolina, first year with the program. Club seen both wild card and Phoenix, and she gets her second goal of the weekend for Brute Squad. We've talked about the depth on this team, and we've seen a number of different individuals contribute. Obviously, they're getting a lot of their goals from Bitterman, but the assist and some of the, the goals from the other sources coming from a handful of players. Seville with uh, another helper, her first of the game. But it comes down to what Boston, you, you would think, coming in with one, and that is their defense to shine. That was the strength, but they need to come up with a couple of breaks here, still trailing by two. Can they figure out this Fury offense? After the early start of this game, Fury has used Mad Dog Nazaroff a lot on offense, working in tandem with Alex Snyder. Now, oftentimes, Nazaroff has been the anchor to the D-line. When she was a freshman in college, she was in college regionals with her UCLA team. They were staying right on the ocean. And on, I believe, Saturday night, after playing her first day of regionals, as they called a stall. Nazarov unable to get it away in the 10 second count, and that's exactly what Boston needed. She stepped on a stingray that Saturday night on the beach, had to go to the hospital. Her foot was all sorts of torn up. She played the next day, and like Kurt Schilling, her sock was all bloody, and what a grab by McCardle. On the backhand fling, McCardle with her third goal, and maybe a little momentum swing in Westchester. For the first time in a long time, Brute Squad within one. A scuba from Bacher with a stall count rising, and McCardle like she meant to do it all along. One of those S9 throws there from Bacher. She knew the count was on. She turned and threw a beauty. Some players just play like they have Velcro on their hands or a magnet or something. And you know how hard of a grab that is, the disc blading down to be able to stop gravity from working as it likes to. Brute squad who has made a living in the second half. You can kind of sense a little momentum. They get the one break. Now can they find another somewhere? 12-11, San Francisco by a point. Jackson, a good look at the first-year coach for Boston Brute Squad. Coming back to his roots, started in the New Jersey area, grew up in New Jersey. We mentioned his college path at Rutgers and switching sides of the country, going west coast for a few years, only to take the job here with the Brute Squad. He's guided them into the semifinals. 12-11, Fury with possession. Aside from coaching Brute Squad, he's also involved in postdoc at MIT. It, it takes a few hours as well. Here's contact for the foul call. I mean, a piece of the arm was her skew as she applied the tight mark on Romano. We're playing it on the count of one as Romano gets set. Nancy Sun with a huck downfield. Boy, she had Carnahan wide open, and she overshot her incomplete. She had Carnahan on the deep ball. You see the positivity from Carnahan saying, we'll get him next time. And all of a sudden, Boston a chance to tie it. Bacher picks up the disc. We'll see how conservative Boston's going to be here. Angela Zhu on the bid and catch. Great fist pump from Ari Jackson right next to that layout from Cassie Wong. They're going to rotate it full circle to the far side. Instead, they keep it center. Turning and looking with the count on is Bacher. Bacher gets it ahead to Groom. And I believe another pick called downfield. Play stops. It will be Groom with the disc. Liberty, Missouri native. Washington University and St. Louis product with it. 
And it's deflected away, but some contact and a foul. Getting a piece of the arm was Jorgensen. Smiles all around, no contest from Jorgensen. Jorgensen represented the U23 team in the World Championships in Toronto. He gets rid of the disc to Wall. Long works it back over to Zoo. Far side to Sinecro. Boston looking for the tie as they continue to inch their way closer and closer to Fury. They've been playing catch up all afternoon. Zoo along the sideline dumps it back over to Sinecro. Snyder with a loose mark as they send it flying over to Groom. And a stop and a screen, a pick downfield. So good position here for Boston. Inside that red zone as brute force looks to tie it up. Who do you go to here, Evan? If you're Boston, who are you looking for in this situation? I mean, you're trying to keep the disc moving. Another pick called. It's three in a row on this trip downfield. Austin continues to inch closer to that goal line. Snyder will have the mark on Sinecro. Sinecro toward the end zone and it's thrown away. Incomplete. They were looking for Groom and it looked like she had the cut, the horizontal cross there, but too far out in front. This throw might be a, a little bit of product of fatigue. Big stop by oh. Fury, but look at the layout by Verhalen. Oh my. Now there was a call, and we're going to tune into the observers here. Let's see how they work this. I can tell. It's a big call here. I don't think it was contested. Or was it? Yes, strip. Observers say it was a strip. It is a foul. Fury keeps possession. Alden Fletcher dumps it to Snyder. Working down win, Schneider to Carnahan. Coming back to the disc is Derek Clancy. It's two near under D's. Downfield looking for Fletcher. She's open and she dropped it. Holy cow. Wow. Just like before, she shed the hat. She was wide open. She got both hands on it and flopped. Alden Fletcher. And here's Boston turning it over. So, <laughs> you know, we go a while where the offenses were clicking full, full cylinders ahead, and now all of a sudden some mistakes being made. Fletcher. You have a short memory in this sport. That's the beauty of it. Gets it right back. Looking along the far side, trying to go back in. Now she settles forehand, flicks it to Snyder, and what a one-hand grab, and she gets a foot down for the score. Soft cap on 13-11, game to 15, and a pivotal moment for Fury. The cornerstone to so many of their championships, Alex Snyder makes a play when they need it most. And Fletcher, who dropped the shot in the end zone on the previous possession, breaks the mark with a falling down flick. And Snyder, the one-handed magnet catch. Don't you think she's been the key today for Fury? Yeah, I do. Play? Offensively, she's moved the disc She's made the right decisions with the disc, and she's made the right cuts when she hasn't had the disc. Now, Fury hasn't been all that successful with its deep shots, but the one in the first half was Snyder to Carnahan. That worked out. 
We started this broadcast mentioning there were Callahan Award winners on both sidelines. These two teams flock with talent. Schneider was the 2006 Callahan Award winner in Colorado, and the Stars have certainly showed up and shined in this semifinal. That was a dislocated kneecap that Alex endured last year. Thankfully, in real life, she's a physical therapist, so she knows a little bit about rehab and how to make herself better. As Evan mentioned a few moments ago, it is a soft cap to 15 here for San Francisco. Two points away from marching into the finals. Brute squad. Backhand flick up ahead, making the grab is Bitterman, who's had another big day. Bitterman, with a good fake. See her rotating on the pivot, goes back to Zipperstein. Right back to Bitterman as they work it up. A pitching catch between those two. Now they're going to try to invite Malinowski into it. But the disc goes flying as it sailed on her out of bounds. And Incomplete. That, that laser beam required a little more finesse from Zipperstein. And one great change that USA Ultimate did institute in the rules starting at College Nationals this past May. There is no hard cap in the semis or the final. So this is a game to 15. In the past, if these points took a long time and say it was 14-12, and Brute Squad scored to make it 14-13, but the hard cap had gone on, the game would be over. No more of that. The team that's going to win has to score last. I love that rule change. Turnover Fury back to Boston, and they will make quick work of it. The flip and the catch for the score. Leanne Hoffman gets another on the assist from Paula Seville. I'd be curious to see here what defensive line Boston throws out there. This is a very important point. They throw Hoffman, who just played the O point, back out there. We'll see. There's the turnover that created the scoring opportunity. The pass sailing too tall for Sabrina Fong. And then Seville, the Callahan Award winner, able to hook up with Hoffman in pretty easy fashion. And Hoffman's headed to the sideline. That's always a question coming into this tournament, especially this early in the, the tournament cycle, if you will. These teams are deep. They rotate a lot of lines during pool play. Do you shorten that bench a little bit when you get into the spotlight of the semis and the finals? That is the question. Snyder, Nazaroff, Finney. Also Cree Howard out there for Fury. Jen LaRoche. Can be Amber Sinecrope with the pull for Boston. Down a point. Game to 15. A shallow pull and it rolls out of bounds. Here he's going to have great starting position, leading by a point. Holy cow. Yeah, the pull never came back in bounds. How big is that? So Fury is going to take over right at the pylon. Oh, my. And Schneider, like she has all afternoon, darts a strike. And Fury takes advantage of the field position. Cree Howard with the catch. 14-12, San Francisco. That pull that never landed back in bounds. Went out of bounds pretty much immediately after she threw it, trying to angle it to the sideline, but it never came back in. So the San Francisco team gets it where it last went out, right on the goal line, and one throw for a score. Huge mistake from Brute Squad. Something they'll learn from. And that's the thing, if you look back, if you're Boston looking back at this game, there's just a couple of plays here where they, they just have not executed, obviously, right there. But earlier in the half when they had it down 11 to 10, they had an unforced turnover. Those are the types of mistakes, I think, that they were anticipating to battle through first weekend, first year coach coming in, that you hope to learn as you move forward into the pro, uh, into the pro circuit, the next leg of the, the Triple Crown, and then eventually the Nationals, which is the third and final leg. 
So basically, Boston needs to hold and then break Fury twice to win this game. Root squat. Malinowski giving some room and a soft mark. Brings it up ahead to Hoffman. Hoffman floats it, looking for Malinowski. A lot of traffic, but it's Malinowski who comes down with it. Three Fury defenders in the vicinity. Soft backhand to the end zone and a score for Boston. It's Hoffman again. All set up by the grab, though, from Malinowski, showing her athleticism. Yeah, I bet Ari Jax is going to agree with this next sentence. I like Malinowski more going deep than throwing deep. She is as good of a threat in the women's game as anybody, with the exception of maybe Sandy Jurgensen from Scandal. But her size and ability to read the disc and go up and get it gives Boston a dimension that a lot of other teams don't have. Her goal today for Leon Hoffman, she has a number of helpers as well. She has been the, the go-to person for Brute Squad, just like it's been Schneider running the show for Fury. Big catch a few moments ago by Becky Malinowski. And Brute Squad, as Evan mentioned, now looking for a break in a game to 15. And the same Boston D-line. McCardle. For Halen, Wong, Groom, Bacher, Sinecrope looking for a redemption pull for Fury. See Rudin in there, Finney, and with Jorgensen and Snyder. Let's see how this pull fares for Sinecrope after the disastrous one just a few moments ago. Much better job, Fury with possession looking to march in to tomorrow's championship of the U.S. Open. They can clinch it here with a score. Carnahan backhand flip, looking downfield, and it's caught. Snatching it was Jorgensen. She'll flip it toward the end zone for the score, and Fury marches on as they survive Boston 15-13, San Francisco, and the celebration begins for the West Coast group. Learning experience for Boston. You talked about just a few crucial mistakes, a couple throws in the red zone that did not connect. And whereas Fury did most of its work in the red zone, Carnahan sending Jorgensen. She makes a nice two-handed grab, patiently surveyed her options, and hit Maggie Rudin for the game clincher. Fury back into the finals of the U.S. Open. They were knocked out in the semis last year. It'll be Fury against the survivor of Seattle Riot and Vancouver traffic. I had a hunch that we would see Fury Riot again this weekend, and I would still predict that to be the case. We'll await the result of the other women's semi, but the two great programs in women's ultimate at the club level, they have long been powerhouses, and San Francisco has another championship caliber squad this year. One of the team captains for Fury, it's Maggie Rudin. She holds in the game winner. Celebration, Alex Snyder and company. San Francisco into the finals. 15-13, they take care of Boston. The 2015 U.S. Open Ultimate Championships are presented by Discraft Ultra Star. The official disc of USA Ultimate, ask your retailer for Discraft Ultra Star. The Women's Sports Foundation, ensuring equality and leadership opportunities for girls and women through sports. And the Girls Ultimate Movement, a strategic initiative designed to increase girls' participation in the sport of ultimate. A familiar powerhouse in the realm of women's ultimate moves into the U.S. Open Finals as San Francisco, the Fury, able to beat Boston Brute Squad. A final score of 15 to 13 in the women's semifinal here in Westchester. A big reason for Fury's success today, Alex Snyder, one of the team captains, a healthy Alex Snyder this year. First off, congratulations. You've been with this team now 10 years. Where does this squad stack up early on in this Triple Crown Tour compared to some of the other teams, most notably last year's squad? Well, it's uh, it's a great, it's turning out to be a great year. We picked up a lot of 
young, phenomenal talent. And, you know, they've really injected this team with a great energy as well as just phenomenal um, talent and a skill set that um, are, we're really looking to tap into and, you know, set them up for success within the systems and the structure that we've been really strong with, as well as trying to bring in um, some new ideas, some new looks, and just really kind of re-energize the program in general. Alex, tell us about the Fury Coach Search. I know it was a big deal for you guys with Maddie moving on. Uh, what led you to Samantha and Kevin? Uh, well, it was it was a tough search, and we had a lot of great applicants. Um, people were excited, and we had the we were lucky enough to be a little bit picky. Um, Sam was an easy an easy target for us to kind of hone in on. We've kind of been pestering her to be involved. She's an ex Fury. She knows, you know, the team really well. She played for many many years, and you know, there's a lot of history there. And not only that, but she does a ton of work with the Positive Coaching Alliance, which is an amazing organization that really focuses on mental strength and um, you know building a team and what those sorts of things um, are why those sorts of things are really important to the team and so we knew we wanted her involved from the get-go and for Kevin you know he was also an easy an easy target for us to hone in on you know he brings a great energy and a strategic mind to the game and we were really kind of on him to get involved as well both of them for a long time so we're excited that they both uh, got on board this year before we let you go last fall at nationals you were not at your peak of mobility it seems that you've got your mobility back sneaking up line for a bunch of scores today uh, I'm working on it, you know, it's uh, it's been a lot of years, but I'm feeling good. I'm excited about the rest of the season. I'm just working on, you know, day by day and just trying to make my teammates better and doing what I can do to do that. Alex, congratulations. Enjoy it with your teammates. Great. We'll see you tomorrow in the finals. Looking forward to it. Thanks very much. A familiar name, Fury, back into the U.S. Open finals as Alex Snyder and company defeat Boston 15-13. It is time now for the Discraft Ultra Star play of the game. A key moment, Evan, late in this contest. Yeah, just a mistake from Brute Squad. The pull that never came back inbounds out of the hands of Amber Sinekrop allowed Fury to start the possession on the goal line. And Snyder calmly hit Cree Howard, who was such a reliable target all game long. Really, Snyder and Howard and Fong and Carnahan and Nazaroff, all key pieces to this big win for Fury. 8-7, Riot leads traffic at the half, so they're battling nearby as well. We'll see who we get tomorrow against Fury in the finals. Could we be heading down a rematch with the two powers in the women's discus set? The ultimate Frisco today. 15-13 over Boston. We take a look at the semifinal bracket before we say farewell. And again, San Francisco moves on to the finals. 1.30 Eastern tomorrow on ESPN3. Riot in traffic, they're tight. Again, Riot went unbeaten in pool play and one of their victories over the Fury squad yesterday. So that's a story, an entertaining Independence Day from Westchester and the beauty is we're about at the halfway point. Men's semifinals coming up later today. So for Evan Epler, I'm Sean Kenny saying so long from Lakota West High School in Westchester, Ohio, where your final score is Fury 15, Brute Squad 13. To watch this game on replay, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. Thanks everybody for watching. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Good afternoon from Westchester.